All right, everybody. Welcome to the big board. Let's have a look at a quick shrink rip on uh, this new title from Lock and Load Publishing, which is a, a reprint of a game that was originally published in uh, in Japan and in uh, Japanese. The uh, title is The Pacific War, and what I intend to do this time is a little bit different. Let's where the first segment of the video is going to cover off on components, rule book, and all the bits and pieces in the map and all that sort of good fun stuff. And then if, uh, if I uh, have enough time and uh, actually space on the camera, it seems like we're uh, low on space here, but uh, I'm going to actually take a, a slow look through the rule book. I had been trying to put off doing this shrink rip until I finished the rules. Unfortunately, I have not finished reading the rules, uh, so I thought we might just kind of Grad, uh, slowly go through them, have a look at them, and get a feel for what the game might be like. Because this looks like an interesting title, number one. And number two, it looks like it's a different uh, take on the Pacific War and, uh, and all elements of the Pacific War. And I think it might be worth uh, having a look at in a little bit more detail before we kind of, before you, you know, jump in and buy it. So, you know, I've got the rule book out already. Here's the box. Nice uh, artwork and formatting uh, and a beautiful uh, finish on the box and materials on, on, on the box. <clears throat> you can see some of the uh, counter art here. Bottom here, it's, it talks about uh, complexity level and uh, I assume there's 10 boxes here, so it's a 4 out of 10. 2 out of 10 for solitaire play, so it's ideally a uh, two-player game, more than likely. But interestingly enough, it's a, uh, a, a short play-up, two to four hours, which is uh, pretty good. If you're, Maybe this is something you can sit down and, uh, in the course of an evening, uh, play out uh, some aspects of the, the war. So um, not many titles at the strategic level, which I think is what this is, uh, that are going to be dealing that are uh, playable in that time frame. So that was the first thing that caught my attention when I uh, when I got this. So uh, the back, this is probably a little hard to read for you guys here, so I might just uh, skim read it for you. Obviously it talks about Pearl Harbor uh, in the opening paragraph here, and then it says, In the Pacific War, the Pearl Harbor to the Philippines, two players face off in an epic struggle for control of Pacific area of operations. In action from De December 41 through June 44, the Japanese player must use his forces against the Allied forces from the US, Great Britain, Australia, and the Netherlands. Aircraft carriers, battleships, cruisers, land-based aircraft are all involved. And with them, each player plans and conducts, out, conducts strategies out of a limited hand of resource cards in order to gain the initiative and defeat his enemy's forces and control ports and VP locations and stuff like that. Uh, Japanese were the strongest at the beginning, as we know, and then the uh, Allies gaining power and resources as we go on, yada, yada, yada. Uh, few would debate Japan's chances of victory, but, in the goal, but the goal of the Pacific War is to see whether Japanese forces can achieve better military gains and delay its defeat. Or can the Allies win a quicker victory? It's up to the players to utilize their assets Etc. 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 So, interesting little take there, right? So it's not running all the way through to uh, Operation Olympic slash Hiroshima bomb dropping. Uh, ends up in uh, 44. So we're going to have a look <clears throat> inside the box. Two dice, a set of uh, these cards. Now these resource cards, when they're played, uh, you um, you knife. Here we go. Uh, you take a uh, make a choice with these cards uh, so he, he, each person's dealt a hand of cards and you you choose to play the resource action or the event and of course there comes there comes your first dichotomy of choice there right so these uh, interesting titles here proximity Use that looks like some sort of technology uh, used in combat. Port invasions, and then the flip side for the Japanese long range raids, retreat from Kiska. These are uh, just events that occur. And of course, I guess some of this is cards that can be used in the strategy phase. We'll have a look at the sequence of play and all that later on, so you can see there the cards that are involved. 
Now the map comes as a very heavy stock. You can just tell by the feel of it. <clears throat> I'm probably going to have to move the camera to get all this into focus. So you have to bear with me here. And I, I'm not trying to flatten this out, so don't freak out when you see it all bent. But it, it's very heavy weight, and I wish, wish I knew my poundage so I could tell you. I would say this is akin to, if you know some of the block games that come with cardboard maps that are thick, uh, it's that kind of weight. So we've got our turn track, it's a five turn game, victory point collection, uh, sequence of play here on the map. Uh, from uh, turn zero has a special set of uh, activities or some actions that you execute in a specific order uh, for Pearl Harbor and then you go through turns one through five so technically a six turn game right initiative flow chart here then these areas that you're moving across we've got a combat results table here this is the way the Great Barrier Reef is Jolly good. Uh, Hawaiian Islands, Aleutians, and a combat chart for the uh, opposing player over there. And just bear with me with the, um, and there's a West Coast box over here. And now the, the map has this um, sub layer to it that is a, a cartographic or oceanographic uh, layer right so it looks like you've got you can see the underwater ranges and canyons and things like that it's got this interesting texture a textured look to it uh, you can probably let me see if I can zoom in on a section of it over here you can see it pretty nicely there see that it looks very cool when you look at the map uh, and it's a it's a gray it's a blue gray color map I'm not sure if that's coming through on the on the image in the in the picture or not uh, so it's very uh, it's very thematic and uh, you know I, I don't know how I feel about the the terrain color uh, Australia is probably right <laughs> mostly desert uh, so there you go so uh, that it has a feel of a of a satellite map is what I would say. And I have no idea how this folded up. I wasn't paying attention. So I'm just going to put this to one side. Uh, there you go. I, think, I think that's not how it goes. <laughs> Alright. Uh, we have a battle card that is used to resolve combat by the looks of it. Very large counters. I want to say these uh, look like they're almost one inch counters. You've got your movement rate, uh, attack and defense rate, and then when you flip them over, they have their ops complete uh, side. And these are laser cut pop out. So these are gonna, yeah, these are gonna pop out super easy. Got both the English and Japanese titles of the uh, ships, in, in English and Japanese, I should say. And then you have aircraft units. You'll note there's no, doesn't appear to be any um, any infantry base forces, but there are uh, bases and port uh, you know, locations for ports and things like that, obviously enough. This is a 1 MP, 2 MP remaining. I guess that's as you keep track of your points as you're conducting activities. And then there are these uh, special events that occur during the game. Midway, Operation Vengeance, uh, Coral Sea, uh, the Magic uh, encryption breaking stuff that you're all probably familiar with. Oh, look, there's an infantry division from the uh, the U.S. Uh, from the Australians, I should say. So maybe there are there are ground forces. I take it back. Right. So uh, a what looks to me at a high level and a quick glance uh, a fast playing light game. Let's have a look at the rule book just to give you a feel for the rule book. Uh, full color, nice index at the front, 43 pages, but big, big font. This is uh, every bit of 12 or 14 uh, point font. 
and as you can see, lots of diagrams. I'm going to make sure we're zoomed out here. Uh, lots of diagrams and images explaining all the different aspects of the game and the counters, the gunnery strengths and events. And there's a detailed sequence of play here for turn zero. And uh, then, of course, there's... Uh, so we'll go through. So now, okay, so as you can see, this, so this is the rules, right? We can just flick through here and see uh, substantial in red examples of play and diagrams to go with. So fairly extensively documented by the looks of it. And the rules are written in a, uh, I would call them a conversational style versus a case uh, legalistic style. Uh, so they're not terse. They are probably a little verbose. And, uh, but uh, consumable. And it's written from a, a big I would say a early gamer, not beginner, but an early gamer standpoint. This is something that, uh, as you read the rules, you'll get the feel that this is written. This is designed to be playable by many levels of player. Um, definitions of control, then some advanced rules. Fun stuff like that. Designer notes. And here is our original designer, Yasushi Nakaguro. Uh, so, uh, pretty extensive designer notes in here, actually. It's pretty cool. So, so that's that's a shrink rip for you, right? What I, if we're interested, what I'd like to do at this point is spend maybe five minutes just kind of uh, looking at the rules in a little more detail. And so we'll go and do that now. So if you're not interested in that, now's a great time to sign off and we'll, uh, we'll carry on. So the idea, so I mentioned to you earlier on, uh, so let's have a look at the counters first and we'll talk about cards in a second here. So we do have gunnery strength and defensive strength, movement, airstrike capability for um, this particular uh, uh, carrier unit. Is that a carrier, the hero? I don't think it was. But it did have sea search planes, perhaps. Yamamoto battleship, you can see the, the delta there between uh, its gunnery strength and some others, right? US naval unit here, the Oklahoma, uh, front and back. British naval units, front and back. The Hermes doesn't get much for good rap, does it? Gunnery strength of zero, interesting. Uh, then. <clears throat> Australian and allied aircraft and good stuff like that. Game markers. <coughs> so the gunnery strength uh, is used, uh, let's see, uh, airstrike strength is used uh, for naval units that have a value in this field are uh, aircraft carriers. Okay, then. Uh, only uh, aircraft carriers and LBAs have uh, aircraft strike strength. Okay. Gunnery is used for naval combat, obviously enough. Defense strength is its uh, basically a unit uh, unit's ability to survive a gunnery attack. <clears throat> Movement speed. This displays how uh, how much a unit can move during during a movement. Lucky that, hey. Eh? A uh, unit with a, mo a movement of zero can enter an OZ if there are no enemy units. An OZ is an operational zone or you know an area on the map. Um, LBA that is moved using redeployment can move regardless of its speed value. Now here's a resource cards and you'll see here it talks about resource cards so allow you to conduct actions. Each card allows you to conduct one action and those resource actions can be used in the uh, strategy phase uh, to ready naval units to open up uh, restricted sea route actions uh, in the strategy phase to uh, fleet train deployment actions uh, to conduct uh, supply phase and ground strength point actions ground strength actions I should say and resupply naval units this is the format of a typical card 
event title, description, strategic event, strategy phase, sequence of play. This side, we looked at this just quickly uh, before. Okay, so this is the Pearl Harbor uh, business. Okay. I don't know if you guys can see that okay, but... Uh, Then there's a supply phase. Japanese player checks for isolation, as does the allied player. Uh, look at ports for invasion. Japanese player does redeployment and return to port. Then the allied player does the same. Japanese player resupplies. The allied player does the same. And then we do victory point calculations. Reinforcement phase. Let me see the sequence of play here on the map for a second. Here we go. So, yeah, sequence of play. Reinforcements, draw resource cards, go through the strategy phase, do the supply phase, which was the, this, this little section over here, and then do victory, victory points. Okay, so that is the that is the sequence of play. It's pretty straightforward. like uh, we, we're rolling for initiative unless you use a card using resource cards to uh, conduct various actions that we talked about earlier on there's a nice movement example Okay, no enemy units present, even though it has a speed of one. It can enter uh, a zone with no enemy units uh, with a speed of three. Okay. Reaction movement occur can occur. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> I need some water. So we might have to shorten this up. Naval units enter an operational zone uh, where there are uh, enemy units. Combat occurs. Players can use resource cards from their hand. Timing of cards can be used during the airstrike round or surface attack round. So I guess there's a play sequence for combat. You know, rounds of combat. Airstrikes, surface combat, end or extension of combat. There's no surface combat unless the attacker approves it. If the attacker wishes, there is surface combat. If neither player has aircraft carriers. The airstrike is in, airstrike combat phase is ignored. Fair enough. <coughs> <coughs> Looks like we're doing some sort of combat attack. It's attack strength attack strength totals. Add the total strength to all uh, of all the units in the combat and look for the respective column. We have modifiers using resource cards, or the opponent uh, may uh, have has more aircraft carriers, etc. Uh, roll a d6. <clears throat> That's the number of hits. Hit allocations. Airstrike hits. The uh, attacker can select one enemy naval unit for each hit scored. Surface hits. Defender selects which of his naval units has a hit scored on it. So it looks like you're going to track hits against their defensive value. Hits on an OBA. Only during the airstrike round. Damage for each on an enemy naval unit. The attacker rolls a d6. If there are multiple hits, the attacker rolls that many dice and adds a result. If the result is higher than okay, higher than the unit's uh, defense strength. It's destroyed. I see. So you'll get hits depending on how many hits you get, how many dice you're going to roll, and if you end up rolling. Uh, the sum total higher than your defensive strength, then you're in strife. Okay. Okay, these rules are really well laid out, too, by the looks of it. And it looks pretty straightforward. What have we got here? Well, there's a very uh, extensive example of combat here. It's one and a half pages. There's actually two, two examples here. Combat example number one. 
Sorry about the glare. Combine example number two, which is basically a full page of text, once again in large font. Then dealing with supply. I think it's going to be interesting to see how they handle the uh, oil resources and things like that in this game. So I hope that gives you a bit of a feel for the game. Uh, probably not worth me going through it in too much more detail. Definitions of control. Really nicely laid out. And then advanced rules. Japanese poor control as a base by the Allies. Japanese poor control by neither side. Allied control port. Okay. This looks cool. We'll have to see if we can't get to it, as they say. All right. That gives you a shrink grip and a little bit more of a detailed look at the uh, rules. Hope that was of interest to you. Cannot believe the 20 minutes have gone by already. Thanks for tuning in.